So, Geraint, I hear you're giving a talk in uh, in the UK at the Royal Institution in July. Uh, that's right. I'm going to talk on a favourite topic of mine, which is the long-term future of the universe. And, mm-hmm. in fact, I'm going to be returning to London to talk about this topic at uh, New Scientist Live in mm-hmm. September. And I will be talking at Science Week in Sydney in August, also giving the same sort of presentation. Right. So now that people have their diaries out, they've got that down, mm-hmm. what should they put in for the future of the universe? Ah, so this is, this is a pretty cool topic, right? Mm-hmm. I know a lot of science can be backward looking at some level mm. what we do in cosmology is we're very interested in the the birth of the universe and the evolution of the universe and how did the universe arrive at its state today you know where did the stars and planets mm. and life come from so i guess the question that some people have asked is well what happens if we use the laws of physics to look into the future what's going to happen to our universe and mm-hmm. of course what's the ultimate fate of the universe right so Take us up to the first sort of transition. What's the next major thing that happens in the universe as a whole? Well, let's, let's understand where, where we are, right? right okay. we've, we've, roughly 14 billion years of evolution. Right. The universe was born in a hot, dense state, to quote a famous TV show. Mm-hmm. And out of that sort of fuzz, c- condensed the galaxies. These big objects of you know several hundred billion stars, our own Milky Way galaxy, mm-hmm. provided this gravitational sort of well in which gas fell stars formed on our sun mm-hmm. which is you know a, a nth generation star it's made of material from stars that have born and lived and died and we arrive at this point where we have many billions of stars in the galaxy mm-hmm. and many galaxies in the universe right so now we want to start playing the clock forward so that the first major thing that's going to happen in the next few billion years is something very local and essentially what's going to happen is that our nearest large galaxy, which is the Andromeda galaxy, almost mm-hmm. a mirror image of our own Milky Way, mm-hmm. is going to collide with the Milky Way itself. Right. right? We know it's approaching us at you know, several hundred kilometers per second. Right. And in a few billion years, it will be here. Right. So that's, that's going to be a, a big event. Okay. Suppose you know, humanity you know, is still hanging around there in some form on some planet. What would that actually look like? Just a great big bang one day? or Well, it's, it's actually pretty cool because um, even though both galaxies have several hundred billion stars, right? Stars mm-hmm. are actually quite small. Mm. So when these galaxies collide, all of the stars basically zoom past each other. So there will be very, very little chance of a star colliding with a star. Right? right, but these these galaxies also have lots of gas, this raw material from which stars are formed. Mm-hmm. And in a galaxy like our own Milky Way, one or two new st- stars are born every year. If you take two galaxies and slam them together, the gas can collide with other gas, and that basically gives you this big burst of star formation by all of these young, hot blue stars. So it will look quite spectacular. Mm-hmm. At the same time the black holes which are in the middle of our our galaxy and Andromeda, they will actually start to feed on some of this gas. Mm -hmm. And so they too will light up. They will become active galaxies. Mm -hmm. And so there will be lots of extra light coming from the centers of the galaxies. So there's going to be a lot of activity going on. The collision is not a one-off smash, but the galaxies collide and separate and collide and separate. And basically, each, in each collision, they lose a bit of, bit of energy. Mm-hmm. Some stars get flung out. There's mm-hmm. like a 10% chance that our sun will be flung out into uh, intergalactic space. Right. But eventually, after a few billion years, everything settles down. And the result is actually a little bit sad because one of the nice things about our galaxy and Andromeda is that they're very photogenic. They're spiral galaxies. They've got this yeah. lovely structure, but the collision will destroy that. Mm-hmm. And what will be left, which has got this horrible name of Milkomeda, um, <laughs> that's uh, terrible. It is a terrible name, um, will basically be an amorphous blob of stars, an elliptical galaxy. So that's the first stage. There'll be a big transformation in even the type of galaxy in which we live. All right, but suppose we're on. Uh you know, we're still on one of the planets going around the star. We might have to move a bit... A sun, sorry. And, you know, we might have to move a bit further out. Uh, do we survive? Does does do, Are planets still going around stars or do they all get ripped off? Um, the planets will be still stuck to their stars, effectively. Again, right. the chances of these close collisions, which is what you need to disrupt planetary systems, right. um, are very, very low. Yeah. Uh, space is rather empty, right? My, my favourite illustration of this... Have I told you this one? So there's a great book called by James Jeans, who's a famous astronomer, uh, called uh, Stars in Their Courses from the 1930s. And he says, Imagine in the air above Europe there are three wasps. 
then there would be <laughs> that air would be more crowded with wasps than space is with stars. No, that's so, pretty cool. And so, sort of, uh, Milky Way hitting Andromeda is like two of these clouds coming together and two wasps bonking heads. Right? Yeah, that would be really unlucky. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. But but you know the time scale we're talking about here, which is a, you know a, a few billion years, five billion years into the future, mm-hmm. it's also sort of like the time scale for the the rest of the lifetime of the sun. Right. Okay. So um, our sun is a is a pretty typical star Mm -hmm. Um, it's roughly halfway through its life and it's got roughly another five billion years to go but in that period what's going to happen is is that the sun gradually contracts a bit and heats up a bit Mm -hmm. eventually it runs out of its hydrogen fuel in its core and it basically rearranges its internal structure it goes Mm -hmm. into turning burning helium rather than hydrogen and that essentially turns the sun from being a nice friendly star we see on the sky mm-hmm. to this red giant star. So it will expand and um, get larger and larger. In fact, we don't know precisely how large it's going to get, but it's probably going to become as large as the orbit of the Earth, if not larger. Mm-hmm. Which means that that's essentially going to be the end of the terrestrial planets. Long before then, the, the uh, increased energy output from the sun will have evaporated, mm-hmm. blown off the um, the atmosphere and evaporated the oceans and life on Earth would be dead anyway. But the ultimate demise for the Earth might be that it's going to spiral into the actual core of the sun before the sun puffs off its outer layers and, and calls it quits. Right. So we've got five billion years to prepare ourselves. For. Yes. I mean, yes. frankly, if we're still around there and we haven't got off the Earth by that stage, then we deserve what's we coming. We deserve what's coming, All right. absolutely. Let's, let's keep pushing ahead in time. What, right. Suppose we've escaped the sun or we're you know hiding out on neptune or something what do we see as we keep going further on in the universe well in our local universe right our our local universe at the moment is this local group of galaxies Mm -hmm. which is the um milky way andromeda uh m33 another largish galaxy plus lots of small galaxies Mm -hmm. so they will basically all have merged together into this amorphous ish kind of blob by that point and we'll notice something interesting the the collisions that occur Mm -hmm. they'll have used up all of the gas all of yeah. the raw material for new stars will be gone, and what will be left essentially is a um, a galaxy of just aging stars. There will be no more star birth. Mm-hmm. So we will already notice that stars start to die, and it's the oh, uh, it's the more massive stars that die first. Mm-hmm. So our sun has a lifespan of you know another five billion years, but the smaller stars have lifespans that stretch out into trillions of years Mm -hmm. and those smaller stars are are red stars with red dwarfs and so we will see that the colors of of the of the stars are left become redder and redder as there will only be these fainter red stars left Mm -hmm. but about the same sort of time then there will be something cosmological going on and this will be this um this accelerated expansion of the universe completely coming to dominate what we know now is that 70 percent of the universe is in this dark energy stuff Mm -hmm. which is causing accelerated expansion every day it's becoming more and more dominant Mm -hmm. and what we can do is we can calculate into the future in a few tens of billions of years that accelerated expansion will have essentially pushed things so far away from us and traveling so fast that we lose sight of them yeah so what will happen is that our our milky way or milkometer i can't call it let's just call it milky way yeah the, the milky way will be left on its own in the observable universe there will be nothing out there to see beyond the local stars Mm -hmm. so if we are still there uh, no humans in that period uh, or whatever uh, (laughs) it sends from us there will be no cosmology to do no extra galactic astronomy because there will be nothing out there right so we'll be sitting there in the sea of darkness which is you know a little bit weird but right so the way we know the universe is expanding is because I can see a galaxy over there moving away from you. Right. But in the future, it will be the case that if there was a galaxy over there, it would be moving away from me. But we'd, we, we couldn't work that out because there's nothing to see. We would probably conclude we live in a static and unchanging universe. Right. Okay. <laughs> Except around us, the stars would still be dying. Right. And, and we could work out from looking at the stars that, you know, these little red stars, we, we know that eventually they're going to run out of their fuel. And it might be a hundred trillion years into the future mm. when the last of these stars basically 
sputters and dies. Mm. Um, but, you know, we could tell that the universe is changing even on our local patch. It's just that the rest of the universe appears quite dark. Right. Right. Okay. Well, <laughs> any good news coming up next or probably more bad news? Well, there's, you can't sugarcoat the universe, right? Sure. Yeah, so, it's too big. So, yeah. <laughs> So essentially what we're going to do is eventually get into the future. There will, will come a day when the last star in Andromeda, in, oh, in, Mil- in the Milky Way, I should say. Yep, good. In the Milky Way w- will die. Right. And essentially the universe will be plunged into darkness. Mm-hmm. Now, every so often there will be a collision between two of these dead stars and there might be enough mass and fresh fuel there for one star to light up and burn for another trillion years or so. Right. But eventually it will go out. Right. And the universe will be left, essentially, it'll be a sea of uh, dead stars, stellar remnants. So there'll be like the the dead um, white dwarf stars and all these kind of things. They'll become black dwarfs mm-hmm. and black holes. These completely collapsed objects will be littering the local part of the universe. Right. So hey, just explain what where do, where do we get white dwarfs from and how do they become black dwarfs? So white dwarfs are like the the end of stellar evolution for a mass for a star like the mass of the sun. It's mm-hmm. essentially the core of the star left over. Mm-hmm. And um, if you've got a, a star, it's generating energy in its center, mm-hmm. and that energy produces a push, a pressure on the star, which battles against gravity. Um, for any star where you um, that push no is longer there when you run out of the nuclear reactions Mm -hmm. for the biggest stars they can collapse and their collapse can be so violent that they can crush the core into a black hole Mm -hmm. but for smaller stars then uh, when that radiation is turned off the gravity sort of wins and the star starts to collapse again until it reaches this quantum limit that a quantum limit to how much you can squeeze the core and it's this affectionately known as degeneracy pressure, which mm-hmm. uh, which holds up the star. So the star still is hot. It can have lots of um, radiant um, energy from the just the thermal heat it contains. Mm-hmm. And it can take a long time to leak that into space. So when it's still hot, it's a white dwarf. So the core mm-hmm. of our sun, when it's left there, will be a white dwarf. But given enough time, it will leak that heat off into space and as it does it cools down it becomes a, a black dwarf okay so let's just see where we are here so we've got every galaxy in the universe is now kind of its own island universe absolutely anything that wasn't anything that was gravitationally attached to it has now joined it into one big thing anything that wasn't has been carried over the horizon we can't see anymore all the stars have now kind of died and even the sort of rare collisions that make a new star, those ones don't really happen much anymore. So we've got a, a galaxy, but it's not shining. There's the remnants of stars, these black dwarfs, black holes. What's next for the universe? Well, this is where we definitely start to go into the realm of the speculative. Mm-hmm. Okay, So um, the, the question we have is essentially, what, what's the long-term stability of matter itself? Mm-hmm. And I mean, this state where we have black holes and dead stars, that might be it at some level. There could be interactions between those guys. But some people think that matter at the fundamental level is not necessarily stable and that protons, the the building blocks of atoms Mm -hmm. at the nucleus of atoms, they themselves might essentially dissolve after a long period of time. There's an interaction which we're trying to understand, which allows a proton to turn into something else. Mm -hmm. So people think that Proton decay, the decay of protons into simpler particles, that might occur on time scales of 10 to the 30 sort of years. So now we're way, 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 way into the distant future of the universe. Mm -hmm. That matter itself might start to dissolve, Mm -hmm. right? So essentially what happens is that any of these stellar remnants, uh, they eventually start to basically evaporate into lighter particles and radiation. So they tend to sort of like turn from solid objects into just a eventual sea of radiation and electrons and positrons bouncing around so eventually matter might melt i don't actually know the answer to this question when so i've here i've got a particle it's it's part of a black dwarf or whatever so here's a proton right um and it decays into these it's constituted into lighter parts particles including a positron but there's there's energy in that so presumably the electron gets sort of released in the sorry the positron gets released from the does it escape or does it just become more of this blob 
They're, what do you think? Uh, well, what, what will happen is that uh, given a long enough time scale, of course, then if you've got one of these dead stars, mm-hmm. um, its heating, uh, it's, sorry, its cooling, I should say, yeah. might be slowed down slightly from this energy that's injected right. due to proton decay. There are other processes that which would take a bit too long to go into here about quantum tunneling effect and all of this. Right. But it's kind of cool that, yeah, the, the dominant power source in the universe might become proton decay okay. on a time scale of 10 to the 30 years. Right. right. So it, the universe will continue to glow somewhat due to this release of extra heat. Right. It seems like all paths at this point are starting to lead towards radiation. Because if you start making positrons, positron hits an electron, even if that's very rare, I mean, we're dealing with rare stuff here, makes a particle of light and that leaves the galaxy. Things are cooling off via radiation. That's going to leave the galaxy. Even black holes might be producing radiation. Well, that, that again, so you know, 10 to the 30, 10 to the 40 years might sound like a long time, mm-hmm. but then there's black holes. Our black holes forever. And of course... Uh, this year saw the death of Stephen Hawking, and of course, one of the most uh, the things he's most famous for is Hawking radiation, mm-hmm. which is essentially the statement that black holes ain't black. Mm-hmm. What they are is that they they have a surface whereby they essentially are leaking energy into space, and some of the mass that's in the black hole gets turned into energy and gets radiated away. Mm-hmm. Now, for um, a black hole, the amount of radiation is sort of inversely proportional to the mass so the larger the black hole the less energy that's radiated Mm -hmm. so what you get is that uh, black holes last a long time but a finite time yeah that time might be 10 to the 100 years right might be a very long time but they leak energy so if we wait long enough in the universe then even black holes themselves may evaporate into this radiation and the ultimate fate of the universe might just be this bath of very low energy radiation just bouncing around. Is there anything left to say or, or is that it? We've just got a universe which is, has accelerating expansion. It's, it's full of the occasional photon and even those are sort of being stretched into nothing. Is there anything else to say? Sure, we'll try and finish on a high note, shouldn't we? So, um, <laughs> look, again, very, very speculative. Very, very speculative, of course, that, that that could be the end of the universe and there might be just an eternity of this ever-cooling waste of energy mm-hmm. and that we have managed to you know, enjoy the, the, the few hours of, of, of sunshine in the universe <laughs> before the universe goes into eternal darkness. Some people have wondered, though, you know, is that really the end of the universe? Is mm-hmm. the universe definitely destined for uh, an eternity with nothing happening and there are some ideas that maybe not maybe our universe might have a possibility of another burst of life Mm -hmm. and it might come from dark energy itself and there's this this notion that dark energy is somehow energy that's caught up somewhat it's it's not in its lowest energy state it's like Mm -hmm. you know like a, a a ball resting on a shelf with a bit of a nudge that a ball could fall off the shelf and the energy is released and if dark energy is like that and maybe on these huge timescales, eventually quantum mechanics will allow the dark energy to go from this high energy state to a low energy state. And if it does that, then there's going to be a burst of energy into the universe and it might effectively be a rebirth of mm. the universe into something new in the future. But that's definitely in the realm of speculation. It is definitely in the realm of speculation. Definitely, yes. But these are the sort of speculations that we're invited to do by cosmology because we can sort of tell the story up to here it's sort of natural to push it off into the future and see what happens next yes and in fact i'm going to do a, a blatant advert here for a, a book i recently read a book by fred adams and greg Glockling called where are we the five ages of the universe which basically traces the future history of the universe and talks about all the various things that we spoke about today oh my goodness we're not promoting our own book it's someone yeah. else's yeah, uh, yeah. amazing yes yes but uh, this should be read after somebody has purchased a for- fortunate oh, universe of course yes, yes, very of course. good that's very wise yes. well thank you very much great thank you